This is my bike. Yes, there are many like it, but this one is mine. Hello YouTubers, subscribers and friends. Welcome to my channel, One Down, Four Up. It's a crisp 51 degrees out right now. And uh, already my nose is frozen. Beautiful day, no rain for the next week. We've been getting a lot of rain, a lot of very cold, cold weather here in uh, Tucson, Arizona. We got about two feet of snow up on the mountain, Mount Lemon or the Catalina Mountains north of Tucson. At the very top, it's called Mount Lemon. The ski valley is open. Oh man, my neck is freezing. It's such a beautiful day, I figure I'd go for a ride. Going into town, gotta get some stuff from Lowe's. Figure I'd talk about, uh, Goodness, that truck wind almost knocked me off. Talk about living in a foreign country. Have you ever lived in a foreign country other than uh, Canada or Mexico? Because Canada is not really, not really, really a foreign country. Or as Reggie with 2G says, Canada, uh, Mexico. You know, sometimes I think I'm in Mexico. Some of the places I go here in town, everybody's speaking Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. But uh, I have lived in Indonesia. My wife is Indonesian. She's from Indonesia. And, uh, yeah, she's a foreigner. She's Asian. I'm part Asian. A lot of people look at me and they're like, ah, ah, ah. I don't know, man. What the hell are you? You Filipino? I get that a lot. I get a lot of that. Are you Filipino? But when I went to the Philippines, they didn't ask me if I was Filipino. They'd ask me, you American? How'd you know that? Uh, you look like you're from America. They speak English in the Philippines. Hold on, excuse me one minute. Oh, it's itchy. Yeah, I was surprised they speak uh, perfect English in the Philippines. They speak some English in Indonesia, but most of the time the people that speak in, uh, English in Indonesia have uh, spent time in America. They've gone to school in America or something like that. And uh, I want to teach you a couple of sayings in Indonesian that if you would like, you could use on uh, your loved ones or your friends. First one I want to say is uh, this is how you tease somebody in Indonesian. Uh, say like, uh, you know, like Eddie Murphy said, I got some ice cream, I got some ice cream, and you know you got me because you're on welfare. You know, kind of like teasing like that. Well, here's a way you can tease somebody in Indonesian is to teach you how to say it. You got to use your finger though. You got to go like this with your finger. Cassiendo low, like make a long S. Cassiendo low, and uh, I'll give you an example of how what that means. Like, say uh, you're making a t some toast, you put some butter on it, and you, and you put it on a plate, and you turn, and the, one of the toast falls over and lands on the floor. You know, if you're in America, you'd be like, ah, ah, you dropped your toast. You know, but in, in Indonesia, you'd be like this, Cassiendo low, and uh, pretty much means the same thing. Casiendalo. They used to say that to me all the time because I'd be like, I don't understand what you're saying. And Casiendalo. But I picked up that really quick. And uh, let me get around this corner here. The sun is blinding out today. Living in Indonesia is like living on another planet, man. I mean, it's they're like stuck in the 70s. They still wear bell-bottom pants over there. And they listen to the Bee Gees and 70s music. The Beatles, they really love the Beatles. My wife's brother is a huge Beatle and Bee Gees fan. I don't know if my camera's picking it up, but you can see snow up on the mountain there. Yeah, so here's another saying. Say you have a girlfriend or a wife, a loved one, and you want to say, uh, I love you. This is the very first thing my wife ever taught me. I told her, yeah, teach me how to speak Indonesian. She's like, no, it's too hard. You won't be able to learn it. I'm like, listen, when I want to learn something, I learn it really fast. Write it down. 
let me read it for five minutes let me say it over my head for five minutes and then ask me in a week how to say it what it means and i bet you i can tell you so this is the first thing she's ever told me this is how you say i love you in indonesian saya cinta kamu that's how you say it. You spell it with a k kamu that means i love you in indonesian you say it to your wife or your girlfriend don't say it to your mother-in-law like I did when I first met my wife's mom and she asked me if I know anything in Indonesian I said Saya Chinta Kamu and she got really really red in the face and my wife's like you don't say that to my mom you say that to me or your girlfriend or your wife and I was like she asked me if I knew how to say anything you know there's another word that you can learn if you want to say yes depending on what island in Indonesia because they have different dialects on different islands if you want to say uh, yes you can say uh, EO like EYO EO that means yes and if you're on another island uh, that's how you say yes in the island of Sulawesi in the city I lived in called Monado you can go on my I see got the truth channel and type in the uh, things I did while I lived in Indonesia and I got a bunch of videos over there show what I did the houses I built and stuff like that Indonesia if you want to learn more about what I did in Indonesia if you're in Jakarta, you want to say "ia," like "ia." That's how you say "yes" in that "ia" in Jakarta, the capital of uh, Indonesia, Jakarta, where my wife's family is from, or where they actually live right now. Apakabar. It means like, uh, "What's going on?" or "How are you doing?" Apakabar. Here's uh, another word you can say if you want to say good morning to somebody in Indonesian. When you get up in the morning, you see them, or if you like go to a store or something like that, you meet somebody in the morning. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. That's how you say good morning in Indonesian. Yeah. Selamat siang. That's uh, how you say afternoon. Selamat siang. How you count in Indonesian? I picked up how to count really fast in Indonesia because they have a uh, TV show there, kind of like The Price is Right. You know, you want to pick what's behind door number one, door number two. Satu, dua, tiga. That's door one, door two. Well, that's actually one, two, or three. Satu, dua, tiga. And that's how they would say it on that TV show when I would watch it. And I'd be like, why are they saying that? emphasizing that so loud like satu dua tiga so I would walk around the house saying satu dua tiga and had no idea what it means and my wife's brothers and their nieces and nephews they would crack up at me and they, Uncle Marco you Indonesian so funny you know but I was teaching myself how to speak because my wife didn't want to teach me because she didn't have the patience to teach me so I had to learn really fast my own that's how you say one, two, three. But you can count even higher, like satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam, tuju, sembilan, sepuluh. You know, one through ten. I think that's one through ten. I might miss. I always forget uh, number eight. I think it is delapan or something like that. I'm not quite sure. I don't speak Indonesian anymore since I've been back in the states. It's been about seven years. I've been back in the states. I've never spoken any Indonesian in my house my wife my wife and kids my wife speaks to my kids sometimes my kids don't speak it but they understand it still susu susu I learned that because my kids were still in diapers when we went to Indonesia so susu is milk susu susu you look at your wife or your girlfriend grab her breast and go susu susu what the hell I want milk susu ah Here's another thing you, you can learn that you can say uh, in Indonesian. Um, somebody's eating and you look at them and then you see them eating at the table, they'll say, Makan dulu. Makan dulu. Makan is like eating. I'm eating right now. Makan dulu. And they do that a lot. If you walk up onto somebody and they're eating a, somewhere, sitting down eating, they'll say, Makan dulu. And they eat, they eat with their hands, their fingers. They eat like that with their hands, which uh, I found kind of weird. They don't really like to use utensils. But makan dulu, you know. That's, uh, I'm eating right now. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, I haven't practiced my Indonesian in such a long time. 
how you say goodbye in Indonesian. Well, <laughs> this is a funny story because I thought there's a lot of dumb people in Indonesia because every time somebody come over to visit and they would leave, they would go like, uh, Dada! Dada! And I was like, what? Dada? What is that? Freaking retard? Everybody knows you don't go for retard. I told my wife, what is that person retarded or something? And she's like, why do you say that? I'm like, they're saying duh, you know, duh, duh. You know, in America, we're like, duh. Kind of means when you say to somebody that you think they're stupid, you know, like, duh. You know, so, I mean, it's a honest mistake. But, you know, you learn that stuff really quick. They got a lot of words in Indonesian that are very similar to Spanish, too. Like, I was, I was. Move out of the way and watch out. I was, you know, tete. Woman's breast, tete. Tete. You know. But, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. If you ever get the chance to go to another country and live there, I highly, highly recommend it. Because I learned so much about Indonesia that I had no clue. I never knew anything about Indonesia before until I met my wife. And what was a real funny story, when I first met my wife, she told me she was from Indonesia. I wanted to learn more about Indonesia. So I started watching the Discovery Channel. And everything on the Discovery Channel, they would show about Indonesia. They would show these people living in the jungle that had plates in their lips and then bamboo sticks on their, their private parts, the men. And I was like, what the hell is this, man? And I didn't know anything about the city of Jakarta or anything like that. I'm pretty dumb to Indonesia, you know, but... And when we had to go to Indonesia, I was really, really worried. And my wife was effing with me and telling me that that's where we're going to go be living in the jungle. Because she likes to F with me. And uh, I was really, really stressed out about having to live in the jungle, you know, uh, like those people with plates in their lips and stuff like that. And I was really, really happy to find out when we got there that there was an actual city with buildings and stuff. Although I did live in the uh, jungle in uh, the island of Sulawesi, Manado, when I, when I decided I wanted to live in Manado. That's a whole nother story though. Whole nother story. You have to check out my I Got the Truth channel and find out that story, the things I did over there. But uh, I loved Indonesia. I loved living there because you can live there like a king, very, very cheap. And uh, they treat you very, very nice over there. The people, very loving people. But the only thing that did uh, was annoying was that there's a, it's a Muslim country and they pray five times a day. And I think their God is deaf because they play music in their prayer over the PA system five times a day early in the morning. And they, and they told me that you learn, you know, when you live there, you learn to get used to that stuff because my wife's not Muslim, her family's not Muslim, they're Christians. But uh, I never, ever, ever got used to that. That and that. There's no hot water. They take cold showers, bucket showers. They got a big ceramic square thing in their bathrooms. So they dip the bucket in the water and they dump it on you. I never got used to the cold showers, ever. The houses I built in Indonesia, I made sure I, I bought a water heater and put it in, in my house. I had hot water. Even though it's hot as hell in Indonesia. I mean, freaking hot, hot, hot in Indonesia. But, uh, yeah, and the squat toilets. It's not even a toilet, it's a ceramic piece on the ground with a hole in it and you squat. That's another thing I made sure in my house I didn't have a squat toilet, I had regular toilets. And they don't use toilet paper. They use a, they have a little hose, a little hose like you see in the kitchen sink, a little squirting thing, and that's how they wash their ass off and stuff. So I mean it was it was a it was a culture shock for me, but I'm glad that I was able to experience it. And uh the flight there was 30 hours. That sucks. I hate going flying to Indonesia. But uh, other than that, if you can deal with the blistering heat and the uh, culture shock, it was a beautiful experience and I love it. And uh, I can't say enough that if you have a chance to go to any country, do it. You know, get some uh, traveling experience in foreign countries other than America because uh, it's very interesting. Well, that's my time sitting at this light. This light always takes forever. Thanks for taking the time to watch my videos. Hit that subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And, uh, get that cow going, going low soon. This is my outro. Yes, there are many like it, but this one is mine.